Hi, Magnus. Hi, Brona. I'm not fancy, so I'm just waiting to go live on Facebook. So I legit totally forgot about this live <laughs> until like 10 minutes ago, literally. I got, I wasn't checking my phone. So I normally get a 30 minute alert for my events. And then afterwards I get a 10 minute. So I missed the 30 minutes and I only got the 10 minutes. So luckily I had taken a shower and dried my hair and everything. But I, I literally like bolted and did my makeup really quick in 10 minutes. So I'm a little bit late, but I'm here. And then I had to like jerry rig my microphone stand because my husband was in the other room and I didn't have my normal setup. But anyway, I am here. So welcome everyone. If you are new to this, I am Stephanie Shuttler, I'm a wildlife biologist, and I do these Facebook slash Instagram lives. So you might see me look at two different cameras. Um, I started doing them on Wednesdays, but now I've switched to Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm doing this every other Sunday. So I, I answer a question. I have a topic that I talk about. And then I am also open to questions. So if you guys have any additional questions you want to ask, then please put it in the comments, either on Facebook or on Instagram. Okay, so tonight we are talking about, I also, my voice hurts a little bit. I recorded two podcasts today. I did them outside. It was a gorgeous day. Okay, so tonight, what graduate school is best for careers in wildlife biology? I get this question all the time. People email me saying, you know, like they're thinking of different graduate programs, like which one should they do? I see this all the time in the, the wildlife career Facebook groups, and there is so much in misinformation about this that I, I should probably do a full, like a formal YouTube video on this and a formal podcast on this. But, okay, so it, again, it totally depends on what you want to do. Surprise, surprise. I say that every single week. But you've got to figure out what is your end goal for your job? What kind of job do you ultimately want? Because where which program is best for you depends on that end goal. So for graduate school, there are really three different types. Um, well, actually four. So there are, um, I'm going to start with the types that I know the most. There is um, a thesis master's, a research thesis master's. There is a dissertation, PhD. There is a non-thesis master's, which is in person. And then there's online master's, which is also non-thesis. <laughs> if, you, if you want to have a career in research at all, at all, at all, you need to do a research program. So that means that you either need to get a, a master's, um, do a master's thesis or do a PhD dissertation. I highly, highly recommend, even if you want to do a PhD, that you do a master's first because you'll be able to see if you if you like it. Um, I, have, I have a whole video on this. I'll just link to this, but there's many, there's many advantages to doing a master's first. And not many disadvantage, and not, not many disadvantages, and not many advantages for doing your PhD, like just jumping straight through. That's actually what I did, and I wish I didn't do it. Okay, so I'll link to that video. But um, so if you if you want to do anything where you're actually like doing science, then you need one of those degrees. Now, for those degrees, your school really doesn't matter that much. It depends more on who you're working with and who, what other faculty are in the school. So like who's studying what, and then ultimately what you want to do. So if you want to work in herbs, if you want to be a salamander biologist, you find somebody who is researching salamanders, asking similar questions that you want to ask, and you are going to approach them and ask them if they are taking on students. And I believe in my bonus module of my book, Getting a Job for Wildlife Biology or in Wildlife Biology, I believe that there is a template that you can use to approach 
Um, actually, that, no, that's to approach, never mind, sorry, that's to approach for internships. But it's going to be, or to, to, to volunteer in a lab, but it's going to be a similar, it's going to be a similar um, request, but maybe you're going to, you, you're going to add more detail because you want to include information about um, what you, what you want out of this career and why you're interested in this professor. So it totally depends on there's, there's no one single school. It totally depends on what you want to do. If you want to study tigers, you got to find a professor that studies tigers. If you want to study butterflies, again, you got to find a professor who does that. And it doesn't have to be species specific. It can be um, question oriented too. And that's actually probably the better way to do things. But like if you're really interested in predator prey react uh, um, interactions or um, sexual selection, then Technically, you could work on a multitude of species. So figure out what you want to do first and then and then figure out whose research would set you up for that job because you are going to do a project under them that your re and your research is going to be similar to theirs. So think about it that way. If I, I honestly don't know that much about the non thesis masters and the online masters, but I usually um, deter people away from them because um, I, I've just always worked in the research field and I'm familiar with research jobs. So if you, again, if you want any sort of like science based job, so working for the government and um, the state government, um, any, yeah, any sort of like research biologist position. Now within all these different sectors, like nonprofit, government, um, there are there are like non-research positions as well too, but those tend to be like maybe more education or more marketing, more development. So in that case, getting a non-thesis master's might help you. I don't know. Uh, um, all I know is about the research degrees, but it the, the answer to this question is it really doesn't matter. There's no one single graduate school. It's about the professor that you work with. And um, what's also good for graduate school is if you can find a professor who um, where there's other professors who do similar research as them. So if you can get like like a cohort, essentially what you want is like a cohort of lab mates that can help you with your project. So um, at our school, University of Missouri, they had a pretty strong animal, animal communication um, section within the um, evolution, behavior and ecology department. So there were several professors that studied animal communication, uh, sounds, vibrations. There's probably some uh, universities out there that have like multiple ornithologists or um, entomologists. So if that's something you want to do, it just provides you with more opportunities to add people to your committee to help you out and with more lab mates. But for the non-thesis stuff, I would really, again, research the jobs you want first to see if you even need a degree, uh, a non-thesis degree for those. I'm not sure how much they help you, to tell you the truth. And the thing about the, the thesis-based ones and the dissertation ones are that you get paid to do it. So you get a stipend, your tuition is waived, you do not have to pay for graduate school. You might not make a lot of money, you might make... You might skate the poverty line, honestly. Um, in biology, we were play, play, ugh, we were, see, I told you I did two podcasts today. I'm, I'm mincing my words. In biology, we were paid pretty well. We were paid uh, 21000 a year, which in the city of Columbia, Missouri, was really good. But my friends in, fish, in the actual fisheries and wildlife department, they were paid think like $15,000, maybe even less. So you, you still might have to go into some debt or take out some loans or um, get a, a part-time job, but you won't have to pay like $30,000 like you will for a non-thesis master's degree. So if you have any questions again, oh, it looks like Matt, Matt agrees with me. Yes, Matt says, get the, get the master's first, definitely. If you have any questions, you can ask them now or forever hold your silence. It can be related to graduate school. It can be related to anything to this career. But yeah, I found there to be very little advantage to jumping into a PhD 
And it doesn't really save that much time either. Um, so I recommend doing your masters first. So figure out, step one, figure out what you wanna do. Use my resource, the job tracker. Look at the jobs now. Think about ultimately the 10 years from now, what kind of job do you want to do? If you want a job working in a state park, figure out what species, what types of species, what type of questions you would want to ask. Don't just follow your passion because there may not be that many jobs in your passion. I became, I studied elephants, I studied my passion. When I graduated, people saw me either as a geneticist because I used genetics in my research or as an elephant biologist. And there are very, very few jobs working on elephants outside of academia. And I did not want to be a professor. And um, I wanted to stay here in the United States, too. So kind of limits where you can do your elephant work. So I hope this helped. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them on Facebook. And I will answer them um, next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Sorry, I'm a little bit of a hot mess today. <laughs>